So after leaving off with the Thirty Years' War, uh, which again was 1618 to 1648, again, hopefully now you understand whether uh, we were in class when we talked about this or you, we are doing it virtually and you saw the Tom Ritchie clip and filled the video guide out. It starts out as a more local conflict based on religious differences, Protestant, Catholic. It ends up being a more continental conflict for political reasons, right? And a lot of it has to deal with the Habsburg power, France trying to gain some more power, uh, Prussia. We see the rise of Prussia during this conflict. And so there's a lot of moving parts here, right? Even in the, in the video clip you watched, it talked about how the Pope is trying to figure out why are the French and the Habsburgs in conflict with one another? They're both Catholic, right? That's not supposed to happen. Well, it happens because it's not strictly a uh, religious conflict anymore. It's also political. And so this is a really big date. That's 1648 in the Peace of Westphalia. Uh, really, really big thing to remember. Again, 1648, if you can remember 30 years war, then it starts in 1618. But really, this brings the religious violence tied to the Reformation, at least on a large scale, to an end. Right. And remember, the Reformation, Martin Luther's 1517 or over a century later. And this is still considered religious violence that sparked from that Catholic Protestant uh, debate. And so we are now going to allow people, local leaders, right, to uh, pick Lutheran, Calvin and Catholic. Which one are they going to be? Generally speaking, northern Germany stays more Protestant. Southern Germany stays more Catholic. That will come up later in another conflict we'll talk about uh, when we talk about the unification of Germany. And so this conflict does a lot. And on that video guide, we filled out a number of things, right? The Habsburg's power declines. Uh, we see the rise of Prussia and the Brandenburgs. France is going to become more of a uh, large scale player after this conflict. And so there's a lot of moving parts. End of religious violence, right? That'd be another big one. But most historians would agree that this is the most destructive conflict on the European continent till we get to the world wars, right, in the 20th century. And so that's saying something. And uh, again, important to remember, 30 years war, peace of Westphalia, which ends this. Uh, a lot of death, it says, right, third of urban residents, two-fifths of the rural population. Um, small farmers lost land, nobles gained more power. And so those things are all outcomes of this conflict. And ultimately, as we go into this state building absolutist section, uh, what do countries want to do? They want to expand, whether that's continentally in Europe or into the new world, right, in the Americas. They want more sovereignty, bigger armies, greater taxation, bigger, better bureaucracies, and ability to compel obedience from their citizens, right? So those are all things we're going to kind of see and look at as these absolutists uh, continue to kind of flex their muscle in this century. Now, the one we're going to start with is King Louis XIV, right? Absolute monarch of France. You can see the dates there. Uh, constant war for King Louis, we'll find out. Increased taxes, more economic regulation. We'll talk about what mercantilism is and that theory of uh, economics that he's going to really uh, institute in France. And then you see in the bottom left here, the palace at Versailles is a very important absolutist kind of state building tool that Louis XIV uses. Now, just to make sure we're on the same page at the beginning here, uh, hopefully divine right sounds familiar, right? This idea that God establishes rulers or kings on earth, and that's really who they're responsible to. Not to the people, they're responsible to God, right? Or answerable to him alone, to God alone. Uh, still supposed to obey God's rule and govern for the good of the people. But again, when, when people then are questioning the king, in theory, who are they ultimately questioning? God, and that scares people. Uh, he will get the nickname, the Sun King. Uh, because he dresses up as the sun and obviously is the center of the universe in a play. Uh, and then what I would like you to just quickly do is to click on this link. And it should take you to a little three-minute video clip that you can watch on King Louis. It gives you a real brief introduction. And then we'll pick back up with him here after you watch that clip. We'll see you in a minute. 